Welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. Today we're going to be going over how to monitor the temperature in your forge. To achieve this we will need a thermocouple like you see here. This one I bought off of Amazon. It is advertised as 18 and a half inches long. However, that is not the actual length of the ceramic portion which is more like 13 and a half inches long. This thermocouple is a type K thermocouple and it is advertised to be able to withstand 2372 degrees Fahrenheit or 1300 degrees Celsius. You can buy one of these individually or you can buy it as a kit with a monitor to read the temperature and a wire that connects the two. I'll put a link in the description below for the kit and also for the individual thermocouple. Notice I bought it individually because I already had an old PID controller that I'm going to be using as my monitor and I also had an extra piece of wire that came with this PID controller. It's not a bad idea to get your hands on a PID controller to use in this little project to monitor your temperature so that in the future if you ever want to control your forge via a PID controller all you'd have to do is buy an SSR and also buy an actuating valve on your gas side. The last thing I needed was a power cable, which I had lying around from an old appliance. I wired it into ports 1 and 2 on the back of this PID controller. I then turned it on and it worked. It is now reading the ambient temperature in my shop, in Fahrenheit in this case. Note that I eventually uh, switched this controller to read in Celsius. But you can see that I put my hand on the end of the thermocouple and the temperature goes up. So that's a good test. To see if there need to be any set point adjustments on the controller, I put the end of the thermocouple into a pitcher of ice water. I eventually added another uh, recording device so that I can co-witness uh, this thermocouple in the water. So while that's sitting, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. We'll go on to the next part of our project. So this is the muffle pipe I normally use during heat treating. Notice one side is welded shut. So I'll go over to the grinder and clean up the back side of the muffle pipe so that I can drill a hole in it to accept this thermocouple. I mark the center of the back and then I start drilling my holes. I start off with a very small bit and then move up to a larger bit around the half of an inch which is the OD of the thermocouple. Notice it won't fit on my Win drill press table so I had to move the table out of the way. And then I slowly work up my bits one at a time until I get up to a half inch. The space didn't quite work out on the drill press to be able to do this all here so I eventually moved on to the hand drill to get the larger size holes drilled. So this is what it looks like when it's done. So back over to our thermocouple and ice. I don't think the ice is truly at 32 degrees or, or 0 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm co-witnessing around the same temperature, so I'm going to call this good and move on to the next step of the process. Now I must note that I'm using a muffle pipe not only to evenly distribute the heat across the blade that I'm trying to heat treat, but also to protect the tip of the thermocouple. You can also do this with a ceramic sheath that you can also buy online. So I insert the muffle pipe into the forge and try to get it in a good position so that I can come in through the back and insert my thermocouple. I had the bright idea of trying to put a hole in this hard fire brick and as you can imagine that did not work. It doesn't file very well either. I don't have any masonry bits. So don't judge me but my next solution was to break it into pieces. So this is kind of a makeshift setup. If I was doing it right, I'd try to get a one inch piece of firm fiberboard or a one inch soft fire brick to drill an appropriate size hole in. But this is what it looks like and this is where it sits inside the muffle pipe in the forge. So I started up the forge with my small Venturi burner. Uh, there is a link to the top right of your screen if you want to build a burner just like this. And you can see me here, I'm looking at the propane regulator, and I got it to 4 PSI. 
that's normally a pretty low number for this burner, um, but I eventually got it down to 3 PSI to run it as soft as I could. Uh, it still ended up being pretty damn hot, which I'll show you a graph in a second. Um, I'm sorry for the shaky camera here, but you can see I got up to 970 degrees Celsius, which is, I think, close to about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a conversion later on, but you can see this is how I recorded it. I had a stopwatch, and I recorded the startup, and then I recorded every minute or so, so I can see it on a graph. And I'll show those in a moment, but first, I went ahead the next day and set up my forced air burner. Uh, to see how it would perform. I ran it as low as I possibly could. I brought the regulator down to like half a PSI in the tank and then I closed my needle valve um, on the gas supply as low as I could keep it running. And it still got up to around you know 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Which to be honest is hotter than I thought it was going to get. Uh, I like to heat treat in this forge uh, 10A4 so 1500 degrees would have been uh, nice, but it gets way hotter than that. I'm going to try to figure out a way in the coming weeks to run this forced air burner at a lower temperature. I think I'll have a better chance with the forced air burner than the Venturi burner, uh, just because the Venturi burner won't run uh, much lower than 3 psi on the regulator. So here are the results on how the two burners performed. You can see that they both leveled off around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit which like I said earlier was a little more than I thought they would. Uh, you can see I tried some uh, methods during the process to slow it down. So I lowered the Venturi burner down to 3 PSI and then on the forced air burner I tried to close the needle valve as much as I could and I even opened the front door and it seemed to have stifled it a little bit but they both still leveled out uh, pretty damn hot. So I could still use this forge obviously for heat treating. I will just need to be cognizant not to leave the blade in the forge to heat up to the forge temperature, otherwise it will be too hot. Uh, utilizing a magnet can get me pretty close uh, to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to try in the future to get my forced air burner down a little bit, but as of now I will have to use the magnet technique. So that's it. Uh, that is a easy and fairly cheap way to monitor the temperature inside of your forge. Uh, maybe your results will be different than mine depending on if you have a bigger or smaller burner and a uh, more insulated or less insulated forge. Uh, just as a side note, this forge has two inches of insulation coated with satinite, and then uh, I think it's called IT or something 100. Uh, so it's a pretty well insulated forge. If I only had one layer of insulin, uh, maybe it would not have been so hot in my case. So that's a wrap. I uh, hope you all like this. If you did, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, until the next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.